Greetings and peace to you on this fourth Sunday in Lent, Laetare Sunday. Today we will be going through just the basic readings from the old office and the new office. And instead of doing the office for the dead tomorrow, in recognition in the new calendar of the Solemnity of St. Joseph, spouse of the Virgin Mary, we will be doing the whole office, morning office, for St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace, and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made to fill the hearts which thou hast made Matin's Lessons from the Book of Exodus Meanwhile, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Madian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Responsory The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh's heart has been hardened. He will not let my people go unless a strong hand forces him to. The cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen their affliction. Come now, I will send you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh's heart has been hardened. He will not let my people go unless a strong hand forces him to. A continuation of the lesson. But the Lord said, 
I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians, and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the country of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hevites, and Jebusites. So indeed the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have truly noted that the Egyptians are oppressing them. Come now, I will send you to Pharaoh to lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He answered, I will be with you, and this shall be your proof, that it is I who have sent you. When you bring my people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this very mountain. But, said Moses to God, when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. Responsory Let us sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and rider he has cast into the sea. My helper and my protector is the Lord, and he has become my salvation. Versicle The Lord is a warrior. Almighty is his name. My helper and my protector is the Lord, and he has become my salvation. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is that of Tiberias. And there followed him a great crowd, because they were witnessing the signs he worked on those who were sick, etc. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A homily of St. Augustine, Bishop. The miracles performed by our Lord Jesus Christ are certainly divine deeds, calling the human mind to an understanding of God through visible things. God is not such a being as can be seen with the eye. Moreover, his wondrous workings, by which the whole world is ruled, all creation ordered, are taken as commonplace because of their frequency. For example, almost no one bothers to notice God's marvelous and amazing work in any grain of seed. Hence, in his mercy, God has reserved certain of his works to be performed at apt moments. These works go beyond nature's usual ordered progression, 
and the sight of them gives pause to those for whom the daily marvels have become commonplace, not because these deeds are any greater, but because they are unusual. Responsory. Hearken, my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Versicle. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter mysteries from of old. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Quick commentary. It's fascinating that St. Augustine puts, say, the splitting of the Red Sea, the raising of the dead, on the same level as a grain of seed growing and fructifying into something useful for us. And as I was reading it, you know, uh, what came to my mind was, in many ways, there is no such thing as... as as solid material world as we often conceive it, everything is a, is vibrating at a molecular level. Everything is moving. The solidity is almost an illusion. The vibration, the frequency of these particles uh, are, are, are oscillating in a field of being. Uh, physicists now posit that the atom is not, in fact, the building block or the primary foundational element of reality, but actually interlapping fields of various kinds in which the atoms have play are the framework. And how fitting that our Lord uses a field as his metaphor for the interior life and the kingdom and how fitting here, St. Augustine says that the growth of a seed in a field is just as miraculous as the miracles our Lord performed in his humanity while he walked the earth. Something to give us pause, something like bilocation or stigmata or prophecies and visions, visitations from angels. For God, they're all normal. What would it look like if, if we lived with such a supernaturally minded perceptivity that we saw God in the mundane and we came to expect the unusual? But enough of my musings. Now we move on to the readings from the new office. From a treatise on John by St. Augustine. Christ is the way to the light, the truth, and the life. The Lord tells us, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness will have the light of life. In these few words, he gives a command and makes a promise. Let us do what he commands, so that we may not blush to covet what he promises, and to hear him say on the day of judgment, I laid down certain conditions for obtaining my promises. Have you fulfilled them? If you say, What did you command, Lord our God? He will tell you, commanded you to follow me. You asked for advice on how to enter into life. What life, if not the life about which it is written, with you is the fountain of life? Let us do now what he commands. Let us follow in the footsteps of the Lord. Let us throw off the chains that prevent us from following him, who can throw off these shackles with the, without the aid of of the one addressed in these words, you have broken my chains. Forgive me, my inflection was incorrect. 
Who can throw off these shackles without the aid of the one addressed in these words? You have broken my chains. Another psalm says of him, The Lord frees those in chains. The Lord raises up the downcast. Those who have been freed and raised up follow the light. The light they follow speaks to them. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. The Lord gives light to the blind. Brethren, that light shines on us now, for we have had our eyes anointed with the eye salve of faith. His saliva, his saliva was mixed with earth to anoint the man born blind. We are of Adam's stock, blind from our birth. We need him to give us light. He mixed saliva with earth. And so it was prophesied, hmm, forgive me. My apologies for that. I thought I had a window closed and I didn't. So I was getting notifications. <clears throat> His saliva was mixed with earth to anoint the man born blind. We are of Adam's stock, blind from our birth. We need him to give us light. He mixed saliva with earth. And so it was prophesied, truth has sprung up from the earth. He himself has said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We shall be in possession of the truth when we see face to face. This is his promise to us. Who would dare to hope for something that God in his goodness did not choose to promise or bestow? We shall see face to face. The Apostle says, Now I know in part, now obscurely through a mirror, but then face to face. John the Apostle says in one of his letters, Dearly beloved, we are now children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. We know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is a great promise. If you love me, follow me. I do love you, you protest, but how do I follow you? If the Lord your God said to you, I am the truth and the life, in your desire for truth, in your love for life, you would certainly ask him to show you the way to reach them. You would say to yourself, truth is a great reality, life is a great reality, if only it were possible for my soul to find them. You ask how to follow him? Listen to what he said before anything else. I am the way. So before he told you where to go, he told you how. I am the way, he said. The way where? The truth and the life. First he told you how to go, then where you were going. I am the way, the truth, and the life. At one with the Father, he is the truth and the life. Taking on flesh, he becomes the way. You are not being told, labor to find the way by which you can come to truth and life. That is not it at all. Do not be sluggish. Get up. The way has itself come to you. It has woken you from sleep. So, since you have been woken from sleep, get up and walk. Or perhaps you are indeed trying to walk, but cannot do it, because your feet hurt. Why are your feet hurting? Has avarice caused you to run over rough ground? The word of God heals even the lame. Or perhaps your feet are sound, but you cannot see the way to follow. Even so, he gives sight even to the blind. I hope this recording has found you well and in good health, of a sober mind and in spiritual equilibrium. May God bless you. May God love you. May God's peace be with you always. Please pray for me as I pray for you.